five, four, three, two, one. Hey, Shagheads, it's Curtis Tucker here with another long-awaited episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I, I, I'm thinking about shortening the name of the podcast to Shaggy Life because that is going to be kind of the lifestyle brand that uh, I am going to get going here one of these days. But uh, for now, it is a Shaggy Duck life. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. It has been a while. I don't know why it's taken me so long to do a new episode, but uh, Dave was asking about it the other day, and I've been wanting to do this episode. I had to wait for a couple things to happen before I could do it, so I'm going to do it now before I forget everything. And uh, appreciate you guys checking it out. If you guys are listening to this podcast on one of your favorite podcasting apps, don't forget you can go to the Curtis Tucker YouTube channel and see the vlog version of this. And you can see me right here. I'm waving at you. You can see all my funky, cool stuff in the background. Uh, this is where Todd and I do our live Facebook um, 70s Buzz podcast from but I've got all kinds of 70s cool fun stuff. I even got a surfboard back here behind me. But uh, so check out the um, vlog there. It's a youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker. And please subscribe to my channel. Then you guys get uh, notifications of when I do a new episode. And also subscribe to the podcast. That just, I think the more that people subscribe, it helps me in the rankings and gets more people to hear the podcast, even though I don't know what the podcast is about, but I have decided at this point, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to uh, do episodes about whatever until I figure it out. Um, if I could move the camera around and not jiggle everything, I would show you. I do have the uh, back part of my office cleaned out and I am going to be finally starting to do some painting. I know I've talked about doing painting. I've talked about my book. I've talked about the lifestyle brand. I've talked about the podcast. Um, slowly getting everything going, but I will be painting here pretty quick. Uh, I do have stuff started on the book. Uh, I am going to be a keynote speaker for the um, Northwestern Oklahoma State University Entrepreneur Seminar coming up in March. So that's kind of slowed everything down because I'm I've actually got to give two speeches for that, so uh, I've been working on those speeches uh, and cleaning that up. I had to clean the garage out to get room to put the stuff that was in there in the garage, but uh, now I'm feeling very organized and I am ready to go. And so this episode is really uh, all about being an extra in a movie, and I, I've done a prior episode of being in, in an extra in the movie Wildlife with Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, and it was directed by Paul Dano. And, but it was, it was kind of a more of an independent small film. The latest film that I've been in is going to be a blockbuster. And it is a $200 million budget film, which puts it way up there with like... Um, uh, the one they filmed over in Pahuska, um, the flower moon one. Yeah. My memory. But, um, I think it was a $200 million twisters is the movie I'm talking about. So, um, twisters is a $200 million movie. And, uh, from what I'm being told, from what I've heard, from what I've read, twisters is a reboot of the movie Twister. So it's not a sequel and it's not Twister 2. It's they basically decided to take the concept of the movie Twister and redo it, update it with new technology, new actors, kind of a, a different new storyline, but still kind of the same um, gist that we got in Twister. I know that I've seen a lot of people online um, that are, most people are super excited about it. The trailer, and the reason that I'm doing the episode now uh, is that it has been announced, the actors that are in the movie, they've done, they've released a trailer so we know kind of what some of the scenes are going to look like. Um, while I was filming, 
uh, they like all that kept quiet. They don't want to know, they don't want people to know where the locations are or to see kind of what the scenes are, to know who's in the movie or what the movie is while you're filming. Uh, they just try to keep that on the down low to uh, keep people from showing up and stuff like that. But now that everything is out in the open, uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the movie. Uh, eventually, I will get a blog post on curtistucker.com. And I will have a few of the photos that I took from the set. So, um, so I love being, if you've followed me at all, uh, I've been in four movies. I think this, this was either my fourth or fifth. I can't remember. Um, but this will definitely be the biggest movie that I have been in. So, so, uh, rumors started circulating that they were going to be filming Twisters. And so I kept an eye out. Uh, there is a, um, a, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, the company that gets people to be in the movies. Um, man, my memory's just shot. But anyway, they are in Norman and they uh, send out an email if they need people for certain parts in a movie. And so uh, they started, I, I started hearing rumors, especially when you live in Enid, because they were filming. Uh, a lot of the scenes, not a lot, but I, I think they filmed most of the movie in Oklahoma. They filmed a lot of the scenes up here in Northwest Oklahoma and, and all over the state. But as they were filming, you know, word was getting out that the movie Twisters was being filmed. And so I knew that they were filming the movie and, um, you know, they were asking for, uh, you know, weather chasing vehicles and, and things like this. And so you, you knew, basically knew what, what it was. So when they put out, um, word that they were needing some extras, uh, for some scenes, uh, they wouldn't tell the name of the movie, but just because of the description of the, uh, extras that they needed and timeline and everything, you just knew that it was Twister. So, uh, I sent in basically, so basically what you do is you get an email and the email says, you know, we're filming this big movie that we can't tell you what the title is. Um, it's going to be filmed in a town in Oklahoma, um, on these dates and they give you the dates and that, that's really it. They just give you the date. They don't give you the location and they don't give you the time, but they give you the date and then, like on that date, they might need like the 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 one that I applied for. Uh, they probably needed thirty to forty extras um, for that scene. So so they break it down to which parts they need, and in in the description they'll say we need, you know, uh, males. Uh, 30 to 60 years old for search and rescue, and, or we need males and females for uh, age 20 to 50 for paramedics. And so then what you do is you take a picture of yourself, kind of a headshot and a full body shot, and then you send an email to them. And then in the heading of your email, you tell them what part uh, that you want to be applying for and you just send a photo. Now, the photos do not have to be uh, professional and you don't have to be like you don't have to dress up in the gear or anything. You just basically I, I think I'm just in shorts and a T-shirt in the photos that I send. And so uh, then you wait. And then a couple of weeks later. So then a couple of weeks later, I get an email and it says, we are interested in using you for the. And I think I applied for a couple of different um extra parts, but I got uh, the part to be in a, a person in search and rescue. And so it says, you know, we've accepted you to be in search and rescue to be filmed. And I can't remember what the date was. It was in the summer of 2023. Uh, I think it was in July, possibly. And um, so it said, you know, we will send you more information as we get closer. So, you know, what the date is, but that's basically all you know. So then, like maybe not very far ahead, maybe just a few days, no, I guess maybe about a week, maybe a week to two weeks, you get an email um, that says you need to come, and, and this all happen. I guess this all happens a lot, you know, within a, a short time span, uh, 
this just got drug out for some reasons that I'll tell you in a second. But so, so basically after they accept you, they say, we'll send a, another email giving you more details. So then you get another email and it says, okay, you need to uh, drive to Oklahoma city. So I'm an Enid and they say, you know, wherever you are, you need to drive to Oklahoma city on this day between these hours and get fitted for whatever clothes you're going to be wearing. And they will pay you to show up. And I can't, it's not a whole lot of money, uh, maybe $35 or something, but being an Enid, it takes me, you know, about two hours to drive down there an hour to do all the stuff and then two hours back. So it's not a huge amount of money, but, um, I do not do the movies and be an extra for the money. It's more for the experience and the adventure and the story that I get to tell. Uh, and, and being behind the scenes, I love seeing, what cameras they use and how they do sound and lighting and, and all that good stuff. So anyway, so I get the email it says be in Oklahoma city. So I drove down to Oklahoma city. Uh, they are using the company that was doing the, um, clothing and costumes for the movie was, uh, that Prairie, um, company there at the old, um, uh, where is my memory? The old, um, myriad, where we used to see concerts. So they've turned that big, the myriad into like a, they film movies in there, but then they also have clothing and costume and stuff. So anyway, the company supplying the stuff for twisters was in there. So I went in there, uh, you got to fill out a whole bunch of forms to get paid, um, to make sure you're a U.S. citizen, blah, blah, blah. So you fill all that out. You go stand in line. Uh, some people come up and they, look at you and then they hand you like a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. Um, in this case, they said I could wear, they, they kind of gave me an idea of what the character would be dressed in. And they said, come dressed as close to this as you can. So I had a pair of jeans on a pair. I'd gone out and bought a used pair of boots. And then I wore a short sleeve t-shirt um, because it was going to be July, it was going to be hot. And, uh, so I went down and they ended up wanting me to change jeans because the ones I had on, they thought were a little too fancy for search and rescue. And then they gave me a, a just a orange vest and a baseball cap and said, okay, this is your outfit. Um, we're going to put your name on it. And then when you show up to be an extra, you know, we will give it back to you. So I left and then we had the scheduled, it, we were getting close to the date uh, that we were supposed to um, film. And I can't remember if they told me where they were supposed to film, but, it, but before we could film, um, I think they told me, I think they said we, we were going to be filming in Chickasha uh, at a certain time. And then right before, like a day before, um, there was a threat, uh, imagine this, we're filming a movie about tornadoes called Twisters, and they canceled the shoot because of weather, because of severe weather. So my first shoot got canceled in July. And so July, August, September, I think they rescheduled for September. Um, and so they just said, okay. And they don't. they still hadn't given me the exact location. They just said it was in the town of Chickasha. So I uh, waited about two months. And uh, as we got basically between July and September of 2023, uh, we had the actors strike. And so everything got put on hold. And so for the second time, uh, my part of filming in the movie was put on hold. And so uh, then we went month after month after month and the strike kept going on. And we finally got uh, into winter, and I thought, okay, um, so this was supposed to be released in the summer of 2024, and we were uh, basically at the end of 2023, and I was thinking, okay, this uh, movie may not get done, or it may get delayed for a year or whatever, but then all of a sudden the actor strike ended, and uh, I get an email that said they are going to go ahead and film the scene in Chickasha, and this is the date, and it was, uh, I believe it was in January, December, December or January, uh, maybe December. 
uh, November. I, I can't remember. I didn't write the dates down, but anyway, so we got a new date. Uh, needless to say it was freezing. So basically I got the email and it said, you need to be in Chickasha at 4 30 AM. Uh, well, I live in Enid, Oklahoma and Enid, Oklahoma is basically two hours away from Chickasha. So I had to get up in the middle of the night and leave Enid uh, at 2.30 a.m. in the morning, drive in the dark to Chickasha at 4.30. And then that email, they had given me directions of where to go. And basically it was um, to go to the Chisholm High School. So I drive down to Chickasha, Chickasha High School, sorry. So I drive down to Chickasha. And um, they are, there are sheriffs and cop cars everywhere. All the roads into the Chickasha High School are all blocked off. And so basically I drove up to the first one, uh, the closest one that I came to, and told the uh, deputy that I was in the movie. They let me through, kind of told me go towards all of those trucks. So drove in and they had a whole area by the uh Chickasha practice field just full of these huge white trucks that had movie equipment. I mean, lighting and sound. These I'd never seen so many huge trucks in all my life, and um, and they had these huge tents set up, and then they had people there that were directing um, everywhere everybody to where to park, and so. Um, got out of my car. Um, they pointed me towards uh, one of the tents. And so, and again, I think it was, you know, I, I say freezing. It was, I think it was in the 40s. I mean, it was cold. Um, so, had a coat on, um, went into the first tent, and they did have some heaters blowing, but it was still fairly chilly in there. Uh, pitch black outside because it's uh, 4 30 a.m. in the morning. And uh, a lot of people, and I think I got there about 20, 30 minutes early, um, but I went ahead and went in. And so once you go, I even beat the, the movie people there. So there was nobody there to even sign up yet. So I sat around. Um, it's kind of an awkward situation. A lot of people are coming in uh, to be extras. And, um, usually most people don't know each other. So you just kind of sit. And then if somebody sits by you, you kind of make small talk. And then finally the movie people showed up, they said, Hey, come over, sign in. Um, you basically signed in, told them who you were, that you were there. And then they sent you real quick to a tent that was next door and said, go over there and they will get you ready for the movie. So there were some people that were going to need, um, some makeup and their hair done and things like that. I didn't really need anything done. Um, I did have on a pair of my jeans and was carrying their jeans. Um, I decided I wanted to wear my jeans because they looked almost exactly like their jeans. And then that way I didn't really have to change. So I went over there and kind of acted like I changed jeans when I didn't, uh, which wasn't really that big of a deal. And so, and then I didn't have makeup because I was search and rescue. So then I went back to the other tent and we all kind of sat around and we waited till pretty much all of the extras for that day got there. Once everybody was there, they directed us to this outside area. Uh, it was still pitch black, still cold, but they had a, a breakfast buffet set up. And so we got a full buffet breakfast, and um, they said we could either go back to the tent and eat, or they had these really cool, big, um, I don't know, dining-type trailers. So uh, several of us went into one of the trailers and we ate in there. Um, and then after eating, we went back to the tent and then some new people showed up in the tent and they uh, would get, they got us all in groups. So all the search and rescue people. And I think there was five, five or six of us. Uh, we all got together. They took a picture of all of us and then they would send the picture to somebody and they would okay the outfits or not okay the outfits. And so everybody in my group had on um, hard hats, except me. I had on a baseball cap because that's what they had given me 
at the uh, studio earlier in the year. And so the, uh, I said, you know, this is what they gave me. And so the person that was helping us said, no, I want you in a hard hat. So they sent me um, back to the other tent and I got a hard hat, which was yellow. And I think out of all the search and rescue people, I'm the only one in a yellow hard hat. Everybody else had like red or white uh, or something else. So be looking for the search and rescue guy in the yellow uh, hard hat. So, so then we uh, stood around and they finally got everybody in the clothes that they wanted, everybody grouped together, and they said, okay, we're going to divide you guys into everybody that's like search and rescue, paramedics, police, um, kind of anybody in rescue, you're going to go on this bus, and everybody that's like people that live in the neighborhood, families and stuff like that, you're going to go on this other bus. So we went outside and got on these huge chartered buses and there's you know each bus has a driver and we drove all of uh like two and a half blocks from uh Chickasha high school to this neighborhood that was really close it was like like i say two and a half blocks away so we pull in there and the bus driver's back onto uh, the grass and we're facing the street where the scene is going to be filmed and uh, as we're pulling in, I see this two-story house that the whole front of it has just been ripped off. It just it looks like a tornado hit it, and you can see the inside of the house, all the bedrooms, and and there's furniture and all kinds of stuff scattered all over the area that we could see. And so they said, okay, you guys, um, uh, stay in the bus, stay warm, and um, wait here until we're ready to film. So they were setting up the cameras. About that time, uh, the sun, it, it had begun to get bright outside, but the sun was not high enough to, to hit you. So it was still, still pretty cold. So, the, so they said, okay, we need search and rescue. Um, you guys can bring your coats or we have blankets for you and follow us. So, the, so another set of people... Uh, so you had like this one person that, that kind of directed you when to go on set and when to go back to the bus. And so they um, led us to the set, which was kind of a two um, city block area of houses that were almost all completely destroyed. There was about three houses that were, well, probably four that were pretty much demolished. And then several houses just had like damage to them, but they were still standing. And it was kind of a T. There was, um, you know, one street went one way and then another street intersected it. And so that's where it was basically kind of a, a T area where all of the activity was going on. And so that's where the filming was going to be. So right towards the beginning of that first block is where they put um, us search and rescue people. Uh, so we were really close to the beginning of, of the filming for this day's uh, shoots. And so basically they just uh, got us out there and said, okay, I want you to stand here. And then they kind of spread all the search and rescue people out just over this one block area. And then they, they scattered residents all along the lawn and, you know, had them, uh, basically they were on one side of the street and search and rescue, uh, was on the side of the street with all of the destroyed houses. So they said, okay, let's, um, you know, let's kind of go over what we're going to do. Uh, they announced, we want you all to act like you're, uh, doing search and rescue. You're looking for people, but don't pick anything up and don't move anything. Uh, cause they don't want things to jump around, in the movie if if they have to use you know different camera angles and stuff so basically we had to pretend like we were search and rescue without moving anything so what they have is uh what they call um stand-ins i think um might be another name for it but let's say stand-in so they have uh part of the extras are people that stand in for the actual actors and so what they do is they get a person or people that are about the same height, weight, hair, 
and look of the actors, and they have them first do the scene so they get the camera set up and the lighting and the sound and so they know how high the camera needs to be and all that and they do they kind of do a practice scene and so all of us kind of do a a practice scene so then they uh, pull everything back and they say okay uh, you know go back to where you started and on this one so each movie seems to be a little different on this one the it wasn't the director but it was the guy uh, maybe the head of photography, I don't know, but he was the guy, he would say background and then all of us extras would start moving. And then he would say, um, I think action or, or actors or, or something. And then the actors would know that, you know, like a second later, they, they would start. So, uh, then the actors, um, came onto the set and the first actors that we saw were, were uh, Daisy Edgar Jones and Anthony Ramos. And so basically the scene that we were doing was um, in a town, I think it's called, it's going to be called Summer, Somerville. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, but it's going to be, it's not going to be called Chickasha. It's going to be a town, I believe, in Oklahoma, but a, a made up town. And so so basically those two actors were coming out of the rubble and walking down the street. Now the street is pretty much half covered. There's, there's cars. There's like at least six vehicles in on this set that are completely destroyed or upside down or on a lawn or, you know, they're, they're all over the place. And so the actors walk down the street and they have a camera on a really huge dolly behind them that films them from behind walking down the street. So they say background, action, whatever. uh, And then we do the scene up to a certain point. And then the actors stop at this one point and they have a conversation and then uh, cut and the scene is over. And they do that a couple of times. So, so they know they got everything right. So they know, so they have a couple of different choices. So we film that a couple of times and then they say, okay, um, you know, we're going to set up a, a different camera. So we left the set, went back to the bus and they had a whole table full of snacks, granola bars and fruit and drinks and, um, candy bars. And so we hung out there for a little while. By then the sun was up and it got It was actually, oh, poop, I I forgot a whole thing. Um, So by then it had gotten warmer. But one of the things that I forgot was once we got off the bus for the first time, they sent us to another truck where they gave us more more to our outfit. So we got... um, we got better vests and we got backpacks and we looked and we had flashlights. So we looked more like search and rescue. So when we got, went and got those new things, we had to fill out a form that had everything that they gave us. And like the police, they gave them unloaded weapons and um, firefighters got, you, we just got more gear. And so everybody had to sign a piece of paper and take that piece of paper with them because on that piece of paper, it listed all of the gear that they had just um, given you for the movie. And at the end of the movie, at the end of your shoot, you had to turn all of your gear back in with that sheet of paper. And if you lost one or the two other, you were in big trouble. So we got our gear, went back to the bus. We did that first scene, went back to the bus, um, by then it had warmed up, so nobody needed their coats or blankets really anymore. There were some people in shorts and short sleeve that um, did continue to use the blankets uh, because it was still a little bit chilly, but it wasn't. Uh, for search and rescue, we had on a vest and a backpack and a hard hat, and so it actually was not um, that cold. So then they said, okay, we're ready. So they took us back to the set, and they literally did the same scene over and over again, except this time they had a camera inside one of the houses and it was going through the house as the actors were walking down the street. So instead of filming the actors from behind, it's filming them from the side. And that is going to be one of the scenes where I may be, you may be able to actually see me uh, because the house that they were filming from is the house that I was doing search and rescue in front of. And at one point they wanted, 
an extra to walk in front of the camera to make it look like there was activity, and I was the actor that they that was in the position to walk in front of the camera. So when the, the camera goes through the house and it stops to focus on the actors as they're standing in the middle of the street giving their speech, and I walk by right before they start talking, so hopefully you guys will be able to see the um, search and rescue version of me in the yellow hard hat in that scene. Uh, so we did that scene a couple of times, then we left again, then we came back, and they filmed it with... The guy had on one of these really cool things that um, is like a brace, and then they hook this huge camera onto it, and he walks behind the actors, and they film the whole scene again, but it's basically from behind, but it's close up. And so, uh, so we did that. So that took, I mean, forever to get all those scenes. And then we stopped for lunch, and they brought um, lunch in, uh, styrofoam, and it was, it was packed with food. Uh, there was like grilled chicken and vegetables, and um, it was kind of a healthy healthy type uh, meal, but uh, it was it was good. And uh, so we got fed that, and then uh, they called us back to the set. And then by that time, they were kind of rounding the corner and they were starting to do some scenes that were basically kind of around the corner down the other way. And that's when Glenn Powell showed up on set. And um, so he was doing some scenes that were basically half a block from me. So I wasn't really in a scene. You probably won't see me in a scene with Glenn as much as the other two. But um, I should still be in the background. And then there was a couple times, you know, there's several times where the actors just, you know, walk right by you. You are all kind of standing there. And um, basically when you're on set, you just you don't want to bother the actors because they might be uh, memorizing their line or repeating their lines or, you know, they you just don't want to bother people. So um, so anyway, it was cool seeing them on set. And so, so the rest of this, so this was a full day. I mean, again, we got there at 4 30 AM in the morning and I think they finally quit filming at maybe four or five that evening. The sun was just starting to go down. Uh, it was just starting to get dark. So I actually, when I drove home, it was actually pitch black again on the way home. So it was a completely full day of shooting. Um, again, they did, several different scenes uh, and then they came back and did the whole scene with us again with the camera like way up on a crane uh, from the back so we did the whole scene again without the actors and I'm not sure what that was for um, and then uh, the crew and the director and everybody thanked us uh, all the extras for being there um, during the filming it was really cool just um, because of the set was just huge. It was, you know, two, three blocks of torn up houses and cars. And, um, so I grabbed a couple of, uh, just things that were laying on the ground as mementos that were, you know, they weren't part of this part of the movie. They were, I'm sure they hauled in stuff from a dump or something, but, um, uh, I'll include those in my blog post with some pictures of them. It's just a little, uh, figurine and a ace of spades. It was the funny thing is the ace of spades was in the middle of the street, almost on the exact spot where the actor stopped to talk. And so I don't know if you'll be able to, at some point, one of the, one of the angles in the movie, you'll be able to see it. But anyway, I thought, Oh, well, that's kind of cool. So I picked up the ace of spades and just kept it as kind of a souvenir. Um, but there was so many cool things throughout the day uh, during the filming, there was one point where the sun was just beating down on the actors. And so they they literally, a big crane that only moves like two miles an hour, had to bring in this huge white, um, this white screen. And they put it over the actors to kind of block out the harsh sunlight and kind of soften the sun. And then also to... Uh, kind of keep them a little bit cooler. So, um, I mean, just everything was on a huge scale, the lighting and the cranes and um, the sound and the camera, everything was just huge. So that, uh, you know, that was cool being a part of uh, getting to see 
you know, the equipment they use for a um, $200 million movie. And, and the set was just, there's no telling, you know, what. And, and I think that set, that block, the three blocks or whatever, had been like that since July. So almost half a year they had to have that set up um, because, you know, originally we were going to film in July and it had to be ready. And uh, so, you know, it sat there for almost half a year uh, without getting used. I'm surprised uh, people didn't have more pictures of it. I'm sure they had guards kind of protecting it. But anyway, so so we got done with the shoot. They said, you know, you guys are done. So basically then we went back to that other trailer where we had to turn in. I had to turn in my vest and my backpack. Um, and I think I think they actually had given us better hard hats maybe at that second spot. I can't remember. But, um, so, you know, and by the end of the day, you know, you know, you're talking to all the other extras and, um, it's kind of fun, uh, getting to know people. So anyway, we turned in all of our stuff, got back on the bus. They drove us all of the two and a half blocks back to Chickasha high school, um, got out of the bus. They said we had to, um, you know, sign in to, to say that we'd been there all day and give them our social security number and all that if we wanted to get paid and then return whatever other uh, costumes we had uh, in the other tent. And so I turned all that in and basically then I was out of there. So, and I, I don't have it in front of me, but I don't know, like $125 is what um, I got paid uh, for doing that. Again, not in it for the money. Uh, it was more uh, just to be on set and get to see all that. So uh, as of right now, again, they did release the trailer for Twisters uh, during the Super Bowl this year. And so to me, it looks like it's going to be a great movie. I think the uh, graphics and the uh, special effects are actually going to be better than the movie Twister because things have advanced so much. Um, I love Glenn Powell. He's been in some great movies here lately. So I think he's going to be um, a great replacement um, for the actors and, and all the replacement actors um, that are basically going to be in the roles of those that were played in Twister. I think it's going to be cool because I think both movies uh, are going to be standalone and both be good. Uh, so if you if you ever saw the Poseidon Adventure, uh, I think the first 70s version was awesome with Gene Hackman. Uh, and then they did a more modern version with Kurt Russell. And that version is basically the same movie, just updated, new actors, same storyline, but it's also a great movie. And so so there can be two movies of the same thing and both of them be great. So I'm hoping that uh, everybody really loves uh, the movie Twisters. And so I think they are still on schedule. Uh, I did get an email that said that, um, oh, I can't remember what they call it, but basically letting us know that uh, production was done and uh, it was a wrap. Basically, the movie was wrapped, and so uh, it had gone to editing. And so it still looks like it's going to be, I believe it's a July 12th, uh, movie release of uh, summer of 2024. So we're actually only, uh, it's February, so we're actually uh, just a few months away. And so um, I do not know where in the movie my scene is going to be, if it's going to be, you know, towards the front, the middle, or the end. And then one of the things about being extra uh, that you learn is sometimes, and it has not happened to me yet, but it has happened to several people that I know. You go in, you spend all day filming, you do these scenes, you get your costume, and and then when the movie comes out, um, your scenes aren't even in the movie. So that's what they mean by um, you know being uh, ending up on the cutting room floor. So we, so they film these things, all these scenes, so many times, and. They've got editing and, and time restraints and things. So sometimes uh, different scenes or if they're, you know, kind of following a storyline and, and one scene doesn't really fit into the storyline after a certain point, um, they will cut out certain scenes. I mean, and they, they spent mega bucks on some of these scenes. And uh, unfortunately, some of them do get cut out of the movie. So 
I'm pretty sure the scene that I am in um, is not going to get cut out of the movie. I mean, it was, I mean, it's a huge scene. It's, it's shows devastation from a tornado. So um, I am pretty positive my scene will not be cut out of the movie. Now, whether I'm able to be seen uh, on the screen during my scene, uh, that, uh, that's what's, that's another fun part of being an extra in a movie is the anticipation of waiting for the movie to come out and then going to see the movie and getting to spot all of the locations that you know about. And then when your scene comes on, it's like, oh, wow, there, you know, I'm right there. Or there's the, that person or that person. So uh, another cool thing about filming that scene was, and I didn't know at the time, but when I was in the tent in the morning, a guy came in that I recognized and he was from Enid. And I know he had been in doing some plays and stuff like that. So I went over and sat by him at one point uh, said, hey, aren't you from Enid? And he said, yeah, aren't you from Enid? And I said, yeah. So we we got to talk. And so his name was David. And so he was one of the um, residents of the neighborhood. So he was just in regular clothes. And he was basically almost directly across the street from me in the scene. So while we were doing search and rescue on one side of the street, uh, he was basically looking through rubble in what would have been right around his house uh, with the other residents of the neighborhood. So um, I'll have to watch for him. But anyway, you guys, um, go check out the movie Twisters when it comes out. Uh, hopefully I am seen in the movie in that way for years to come. I mean, so if you live in Oklahoma, most people are fans of the movie Twister. I've probably seen the movie Twister 20 times. Um, every time it comes on, I just leave it on and watch it. It's got great music. I hope this one has great music. Um, just kind of a fun, uh, movie to watch. So I'm hoping Twisters is just as much fun and, um, is as well liked, um, later down the road as the first one was. So, uh, that is my experience of being an extra in another movie. Hopefully I get to continue, um, to be in more movies, uh, not really wanting to become an actor, just like being an extra. And uh, what I'd really like is to eventually, uh, might be fun to be, um, be able to work, um, you know, some part of, you know, be on the crew, you know, help with lighting or sound or camera or, you know, not actually be an extra, but, but actually work on the movie and be there like every day of, of filming might be fun. So if anybody has a movie coming up out there and you need uh, some extra help and you want, uh, again, working for myself gives me a little bit of freedom that I can show up to some of these movies. And uh, so if you're looking for some extra help for your movie, give me a holler and look me up. So anyway, this uh, podcast will be uploaded and then I will have a blog post to go with this on curtistucker.com. And again, on that blog post, uh, I will have some behind the scenes photos, a picture of me in my uh, search and rescue gear and uh, all that. So I uh, appreciate you guys. You guys can go to, um, you guys can email me uh, at curtis at curtistucker.com if you need to get a hold of me and go to curtistucker.com. That's where the blog is. Or go subscribe at uh, youtube.com slash curtistucker and check out the video there if you're only listening to this podcast. So again, appreciate you guys for checking in. Uh, I hope to have more adventures coming up. I know we've got a couple of uh, trips coming up. I'll try to make adventures out of those to bring you guys more stories. So everybody have a great day, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. See ya! <laughs>